If you are interested in radio, be it either amateur radio or just building your own radio projects, then one of the most useful tools you can have to hand is a grid dip oscillator, also known as a grid dip meter, or even a dip meter for most transistorized variants. It's therefore a bit surprising that relatively few people actually use them today, as unlike most modern goodies like spectrum analyzers and other similarly complicated and expensive devices, the grid dip oscillator, or GDO for short, is very cheap and simple to build yourself. Of course, there are many ready-made variants out there as well, although they're not necessarily cheap to buy. The name grid dip oscillator actually originated from valves, or vacuum tubes if you want to call them that, and there are days where the voltage through the grid circuit resistor is measured. Modern variants of the GDO contain transistors, of course. So what can you do with one? Simple answer is a lot of tasks associated with both measuring and generating radio frequency circuits. For example, measuring resonant frequency of an inductor or an LC network. From this, you can calculate either the induction of the coil or the capacitance of a capacitor, either fixed or variable. You can also measure the resonant frequency of an aerial, or antenna if you wish to call it that. You can also measure the frequency of an RF signal, such as that emitted from a radio transmitter. The device will also generate low-level RF sine waves. This all sounds complicated, whereas in reality the operation of the device is really quite simple. In the most basic form, the GDO might only have three controls, one to adjust the frequency, one to adjust the signal level, and last, a switch to switch the device between active and passive modes. In the active mode, the circuit is powered up and generates RF signals to make measurements of inductors, capacitors and aerials, for example, whereas in the passive mode it works as an absorption wave meter for the measuring of transmitter frequencies. A complete grid dip oscillator consists of a box containing the electronics, controls and meter along with a matching set of inductors or coils that plug into a socket on the main unit to select the required range for the measurements about to be made. If you're constructing these yourself then you can decide on what ranges you'd like the device to cover, not forgetting that you can always add additional coils at a later date if you so choose. These plug-in coils are usually arranged to protrude from the side of the device so they can be placed next to the circuit to be tested or facilitate the wrapping of a few turns of wire around them as an RF pickup. Let's have a quick look at a typical example which I constructed several years ago from a practical wireless magazine article. Here you can see the main box and five plug-in coils. As I consider this a piece of test equipment for occasional usage, I didn't actually build a power supply into the box itself, but instead let it use a bench supply, which furnishes it with around 260 volts of the HT and 6.3 volts for the single valve filament. When I decided to build my GDO, I decided that I'd use this knob and I'd use these calibrations that's already on here, which I'd use cross-reference on a chart rather than sit down and make a card with the frequencies on it for all the five coils I was planning to use. As you can see from part of the table there are some big gaps between the frequencies which I had it calibrated against but it didn't matter because I was not looking for extreme accuracy for looking for any one particular frequency. But uh, it take quite a lot of effort to put all this lot onto a card which would be on the the knob on the unit itself. As you can see from this set of tables here, I decided for my GDO I wanted some low frequencies because that was what I was interested in. In fact, we're starting below 500k and the top end is only about 11 meg. Now, there would be no problem in changing this one, simply adds more coils and adds an extra line to the chart to calibrate it. Let's do a couple of very simple little tests to try and show how the GDO works. So what we have here is a 65 picofarad variable capacitor and the remains of an old Denko coil that I inherited from somewhere. And what we do is we try and find out what the range is for that coil by having it with the highest frequency and the lowest frequency with the plates all meshed. So for this particular task we're going to need two coils. Um, I've already checked these out, obviously, to save going through it all. Um, the first one is number four. This is actually the lower frequency one. So what I'll do is I'll plug that into the socket, if I can actually see the thing. That's number four. And what we do is we will place the coil near it, like so. You'll probably see it there. The idea is to keep it as far away as possible whilst being able to register what it's actually um, looking at in the meter. Um, and the further and further away you, you can have it more and more accurate by adjusting the control. But if we just start with, this is just a simple 
showing how it works so it's that close so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to look at the meter and the control and we'll see what we can actually see from that. The GDO is on and we can actually see we have a reading it's actually reading about three and a half on the scale here if I turn the sensitivity control if you look at the meter you can see it's going up and down and all that's doing is that's the sensitivity of the device so it's we set it about in the middle and we have still have the coil up against our plug-in here what I'll do is I'll adjust this and when we watch this we'll see what actually happens to it we're looking for the dip on there to show when the resonant frequency is so let's have a, a look oops there we go so it's quite an obvious dip if I move the coil away a little bit, moving it away a bit, you see the needle comes up a bit. That's oops, a little bit more. So there's quite a gap now between it. Let's say that'll do for the moment. So if we read on here, let's zoom in on that. We have about 86 I reckon on the on the reading there. So we'll put down coil 4 is about 86. We'll check this against the chart in just a minute. Let's go back now and we'll change the plug-in. Notice when we unplug the coil the meter will drop to nothing because we've broken the circuit in there. Now we use the next one. This should measure the high frequency which it Yes, too. So we do that, and hopefully, yeah, up comes the meter again. This time, we're going to change the um, setting on the variable capacitor to the maximum. So we put it down there exactly the same as it was. Once again, we can see the sensitivity varies here. Now we have to do that's done. We change the coil. Let's just adjust the thingy and see what happens with the meter. There it is. Let's bring that a little bit closer. A bit obvious dip there, isn't there? Right, so there we go, there's that one. And the reading there is about, I reckon about 53. If we zoom in, you can probably see that we focus it a bit better. Yeah, it's about 53, I reckon, on that. So that's coil 5. It's 53. Now all we have to do is cross-reference it on the chart. All right, there's our chart, and these are our readings. So, 4, which was the lower reading, that's coil 4, that's 86. If we look up here, we find 80, 80, 86, 86 is there. According to that, 85 is 3.19 meg, so let's say 3.15, so with the low is 3.15 meg, yeah. And... Coil 5 was the high frequency one is 53, so that's the yellow. So we look at 53 and it's here. So you're talking about somewhere between 4.6, sorry, 7.66 and 8. So I'd say it's probably about 7.75. Let's put 7.75 down. So there you go. Those are the readings which we have. So that, in other words, that combination here gives us approximately... 3.15 meg at the bottom end and 7 point, so that's nearly 8 meg at the top end depending on where you have the the setting of the capacitor. For our second demonstration of the grid dip oscillator we use it in wave meter mode. Now just by changing that switch over on the front here turns it from a grid dip oscillator where it is actually generating signals to when it's in wave meter mode it's a passive device and it's simply picking up signals with its LC network here and when it's at resonant frequency the valve acts as a rectifier and we see it on the meter. So the first thing we do is you can see we're still registering because we have the coil in position and it's switched on. If we turn it it's now gone off. We're now in the wave meter mode so increase the knob till its maximum sensitivity and Oops, it goes around the other way, it's easier. Turn it around the other way until we're, we're here. Now you see that's the, the coil we have here. You can see at the moment on the meter there is nothing at all. So, 
This will be working exactly the same as it did before. We simply tune in until we find the dip, except for it's not a dip now, it's a peak because we're actually seeing the signal coming in. So if we I just happen to have a piece of wire here with a, an oscillator on the other end. So if we wrap this round, give it a couple of turns and I'll hold it there. Nothing yet on the meter, but if we turn the, the dial around, we should hopefully see a peak. There's a peak there, yeah. It's not as obvious as it was with the thing working in GDO mode. See if I can pull it around a little bit more. And that's about it. That's, that's working as a wave meter. So what we do now is we look at the dial here, which is reading about 72, I think, if I take that off. Zoom in a little bit on that one. Yeah, it's about 72, I reckon. So if we look at 72 and coil 5, the yellow is coil 5. 72 is here. And it actually looks like it's somewhere, it's just below 6.82 meg. That's 6.55 meg, so 72 is about here. So, in fact, it's tying in with the frequency is actually 6.7772 meg. So you can see it's it's pretty much there where it's supposed to be. So there we go. That's two tests we've done on our grid dip oscillator, showing it's quite a useful piece of kit. Um, I will put the details of the circuit I used here. Um, following up, I'll leave it on, on the screen for about five or six seconds. And if you want to do a screenshot of it, um, then you can look at it in more detail. I hope it's of interest to somebody out there. Thanks for watching.